Okay, so I've just printed out. I'm sorry I haven't written any words on these. I'm not that good yet. But you can see if you print out these pages, you've got a 1-1 one, one in the corner. And then on the next page, you've got a 1-1 one, one and a 2-2. Two, two. So what we need to do is to marry up those crosshairs. And you've got a 4-4 four, four back in that corner there. So if, you, if we can marry up these crosshairs so that those are our... Oops over the top of each other okay then uh, we need to um, we need to just tape them together this is my brand new tape machine the price that I was going to buy it the other day the issues me with uh, one and a half inch pieces of tape, one handed. Oh, I'm loving it. Right. So then again, then we're looking for the two two. God, that looks big. Is that nineteen inches? Well, I don't know. Well, anyway. It's supposed to be 19 inches, and I'm going to go and measure it in a minute before we go any further. Oh, okay, that seems awfully big. I'm just going to measure that a minute because that should be 19 inches. Oh. And it is. It just, it, I tell you what, it just looks that when you see it on paper, it looks so much bigger. But obviously, you've got half, we're going to use half inch um, side seams on this. So again, uh, again, lining up your numbers. Three, th excuse me, people. I hope this is not out of shot. So much easier than having to. Uh, then taking a. a paper scissors yeah we're literally and that I was saying to Margaret either or earlier on that that little um what looks like an odd bit on the side, this bit, is a notch to help you know uh, where you're placing your um, belt at the end. So we're literally just going to cut around the pattern. Okay, the second piece, well, bits on one page, thank goodness me. And I don't know why. <laughs> I have to find a different way of making these patterns because it's coming out in funny different lines and I don't know why. But there we are. It's, it's good enough for you to follow, I would have thought. Oh, saying that. Maybe not quite so uh, easy for... Um, Kelly with her eyesight, or Gail actually. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look into doing it a different way. But right. Um. So this is PDF two for peg bag, and this is the inside facing for the collar. 
and uh, you want to cut one if, if, if uh, this is your lovely uh, material with all the pattern facing up at you all the lovely pretties at you you want to cut one that way and turn it over and cut one that way yeah so you've got a mirror shape and you've got to cut two of those and you need to cut two of these right two of these just like that and two of these but one that way one that way so it's mirrored okay i seem to have a load of peg material still left over it, oh i'm looking on the side of it it's wash day pegs the henley studio from mikawa uk uh if you need if you you know i don't think you will but there you are it's it's four or five years old now it's probably out of print but there you are now you know i said to you with the inner facing uh, this is the front facing which is going to make the collar that you need to do it one way and then the other way well of course if you've got doubled over fabric yeah that's going to give you a mirror image no oh, look that just oh, i've got a cut there come back a bit jack come back to this fat enough yep i'm not worried about a few millimeters at the end of the day so doing it with i got two pieces of fabric here so if it's folded in half then that is going to give me the mirror isn't it <laughs> do you understand that if you've got one flat piece of fabric then you need to do it one way then the other way but if you've got it folded over then well there you are you've got the mirror so i'm just cutting this Oh, and I'm awful, I ought to do it with a ruler really, but, you know, I'm always a bit avant-garde. It's funny, isn't it? I haven't used this fabric for ages, probably on this project. I probably think so, because if you look at that, yeah, I probably did use this fabric last time. Anyway, now, having cut that, I need it in two single, because I did it right on the fold, I don't want it like that. I want it in two single 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 pieces so what I'll do is I'll, I hope you can see this in in the camera so what I'll do is I'll move my mirror so I've got oh the tenth sixteenth of a bit showing hardly anything and then you see I've just cut off the fold that's how I do things so now I've got two pieces and they are mirrored yeah two pieces but they are mirrored so that's how i do it if if i got um it, fold it over say if you're doing it twice but there we are if you haven't got enough if you know it's up to you how you do it anyway so forget that chuck that in the bin now the next thing out of the contrast because i'm calling this the contrast the next thing out of the contrast that I want to do and I only want one bit I just want the one bit so I'm going to go to my uh, ordinary edge and I want it I think it's 13 what is I put up there nine and a half by 13 so I want a big fat ruler in fact I want two rulers this is I could do it on my big 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 one I'm not going to I'm going to show you how I would do it with two rulers. So, first off, let's get myself a. I'm, I'm going from the salvage over there, and at the moment I'm just squaring off because I do like things to be square, even if it is only a facing. Right, so get rid of that. Now, I've got a salvage, so I've got to take that into account. So, I wanted to, how much did I want it? 13 and a half. Let me just check again. 13 and a half by 9 and a half. So, if I chuck, one one is here. So, if I chuck my 9 and a half corner on the edge, but i got to take into account that quarter of an inch or so of, um, 
Now, actually, is it going to... Do you know what? Actually, it's not going to matter because this is going to get tucked in side the... Um, tucked inside the peg bag so you can't see it anyway. So I can do my nine and a half including the salvage because nobody's going to see that edge. But all I can do for the moment, because I want it, remember I want it 9.5 by 13.5, and, and this is only a 12.5 inch ruler. Oh, I'm never, never any good at pressure going the wrong way. Have I got it? Yes, I do. And I'm just going to continue that line a little bit longer. Right? Get that one out of the way. If, if you haven't got the rulers to do it, draw it. Draw it out first. Okay? Then, I need to use a longy ruler. A longy ruler. Come here. Because although I've got the width I want, now I've got to make sure i got the length I want. So what I'm going to do is put my... Excuse me, everybody. I'm going to put my 13 and a half inch on the top. So that's the length I want. And again, in this circumstances, make sure I am square. In this circumstances, I've only got about ooh, two inches to guess. So I'm just going to guess that bit and then use the ruler for the next. Yeah? So. That's the end of that. I don't need the contrast anymore. So now you can see I've cut that piece, which is roughly uh, nine and a half inches wide by uh, by thirteen and a half inches, and that's the inside. So I've got two front facings, one back facing, and with these pieces. I would suggest that's to me that's the top leave that if you've got an overlocker or you got a zigzag on your machine or any other type of edging stitch I would just run those these three well that one's salvage so I don't need to worry about that but run these three with a zigzag or because we're not going to finish it it's not going to get finished because you're not going to see it but just to stop it forever fraying, if you do chuck it in the washing machine, then uh, I would just zigzag it or overlock it uh, so it just finishes those three edges off. Don't worry about this top edge because this is going to get caught in the seam in a minute. Now, the same with this. This is going to end up, when we attach it to another bit, like this. This long seam in the middle of the T is going to get caught in a seam. So is that long T, that, that long piece is going to get caught in a seam. But these edges, yeah, these three edges are not going to get caught in the seam. So again, overlock or zigzag those edges so not the, the one across the top and not the one down the middle the other edges zigzag to stop them fraying okay and then we'll come back to that in a minute the next thing we've got to do now is to cut out the main pieces because i don't think oh we've got to cut oh we do have to cut out the skirt excuse me i'll get my stuff back again All right, so the other thing we need out of the contrast is this uh, strip for the skirt, okay? And the skirt is 22 and a half by 8 and a half. Now, I don't want to... This ragged end that I keep using, and um, this not even, you know, because I cut a bit out of that now. So I'm going to go to the other end of my material uh, because it just makes more sense to me. And I'm going to fold it in half and do what I normally do 
uh, oh, got ragged, you know, slightly ragged ends that end. But if you were doing it with uh, your ruler, you would need to make a cut there to uh, sort it all out. It's, it, it is difficult, I have to say. It is difficult to cut like 22 inches uh, when you off of one thing. But what I would say to you is before we even do that, let's have a little measure. Uh, I'm doing it off a big piece of material. So I'm just putting my measure down on it. And I go right to the end, right to the top, and right to the end, and I actually can do 22 inches, yeah? It is going to include, I have to say with this one, it is going to include the, um, oh, what do you call them, uh, salvage, yeah? But, uh, and I only want half of it. But because I make more than one, I, you know, it's not going to worry me. If it were you, what I'm saying is, if you've got a fat quarter, you should be able to get eight inches out of your fat quarter. You should be able to do it. Because your fat quarter would be this, with nothing behind it. Your fat quarter should be least widths of fabric, which will give you it, right? Um, but... As I don't mind making two, because I will always use it for something else. And I, I think I, I think I must have made about six of these in all, to be honest. You know, my I, I, at one time I thought, oh, I'll make these to sell, and then I realised it. You know, that I didn't know where I didn't know how to sell it, to be honest with you. So I made two or three or four. And, Every time one of my uh, boys, girlfriends or wives at the time saw it, they went, oh, I want one of those. So, oh, so, oh you can have this one. Then I made another one. They went, oh, you could have this one. So I ended up making four or five of them, but they've all gone to family. I don't know what I'll do with this one because obviously I have one. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. There's nobody left for me to give it to, to be honest. They've all got one. Oh, well, maybe, maybe, I'm not promising, but maybe, like we did back in June, when we had a little prize, didn't we, for something or other, uh, maybe I'll put it up for uh, a prize on the group that, um, I don't know, for, we, we, we'll run some sort of competition like we did before. And uh, whoever wins, they can have this peg bag. Because I don't need two peg bags, do I? Right, so. I've just lined everything up as I do. Make sure it's all nice and straight. Get rid of my nasty pasties. So I know that that is absolutely straight. And then how wide did I want it to be? I want it 22 and a half. Oh, I want it 22 and a half. Don't worry so much about that. Because we're going to fan fold this and press it and then sew it on. So we can adjust. That's, that's not the ultimate thing. So if you've only got 22 or only got 21 and a half, do worry because... We're going to fan fold this and adjust the measurement to make it what we want it to be in the end. So our folds can be closer together or further apart. So don't don't get, I mean, I've made this pattern up in my head. So don't get over excited about oh, it has to be this. But it, the width it has to be, which is eight inches, because it has to fit the skirt that we, you know, it has to fit the thing that we made. So I'm going eight inches. That is right, isn't it? Yes. So I go in eight inches. So now, off my big bit of material, where are you? I've now got. I've got to wash this bloody thing. Right now, I've got. What have I got? Let's measure it. 
I know it's eight inches wide, but from bottom include include, and I'm going to include the uh, salvage in this because I know you know I can tuck that in. I've got twenty two inches, right? So I haven't got twenty two and a half. And just to prove a point, again as I do because I don't want both of them. Rather than try and you see, there's two ways of doing this. You can either open this out and try and cut along the fold or do it the way I do which is leave it in the fold and then trim off the smallest sliver that you can and when I say the smallest it's just doubled over the smallest sliver that I can which is this if I open that up that's not even opened up but if i open that up that is the fold yeah so i cut that teeny slither off and now i got two bits yeah i don't want two bits so don't worry about that and what i'm going to do is that's quite quite large for what i want although i am going to tuck it under yeah this is what i'm like this is as mad as i am I'm going to cut off that salvage. So now mine isn't 22 even, it's 21 and a half. You see, it's gone down even more. Oh, that's awful. But you wait and see what we do. No worries. No. So what I'm saying is work with what you've got because we can adjust it to fit. So that is going to be the skirt. Now, remember the same as I said to you, oh, well, with the other contrast bits, uh, to... Um, zigzag or overloft the edges you don't the top edge whatever you decide is the top edge leave it it's going to be covered by the waistband but i'm not going to overlock this one i want to look pretty so i am going to do a quarter of inch can you see this i'm going to do a quarter inch this is what i might see I don't measure things. I should measure things. Let's measure it. Where's a quarter inch on here? Look at that. Quarter inch. Right? But that's only because I've been doing things for so long. And <coughs> again, the other end, I'm going to turn under a quarter inch. And then whenever I decide the bottom is, I'm going to turn under, I wish we'd do this with an iron, wouldn't you? It's a bit difficult when it's a big bit like this. But I'm going to turn under a quarter inch for the bottom hem. Then all I'm going to do with that, to start off with, I'm just finger pressing it for now. Which should be good enough for me under the needle. Come on, you bum bum. Right. What I'm going to do is turn under a quarter of an inch on the bottom as well. Okay. And I'm going to do, on the example that I've shown you, I think I did it in a contrasting colour. I think I did it in navy blue. But on this one, I'm not. I'm going to do it in uh, a cream or a white so it doesn't show. Yeah. So that's the top. The three sides, I'm just going to give a hem and and I'm just going to sew down. If I turn it under a quarter of an inch, then I'm going to sew down an eighth of an inch all the way around the bottom. That's what I'm going to do to that bit. And we'll come back to that. The next thing we need to do is cut out our main pieces out of the main fabric. Okay, I've just got the... Oh, this is my gorgeous linen uh it's not Maycower. it's not robert kaufman it's is it what's his name miller i don't know but this is like a linen look uh fabric one of the ones that i had set aside for a handbag Whoop, don't talk about kiddie winks Put you away. 
uh, so I'm going to use this but because you know when I look at the colours in my pegs I did a navy one which is mine I've done several in this uh, green I use make our is it splash or I can't remember what they call it but it's like a, a, a variegated colour from make our in the green I've done several of those now, I haven't done the turquoise one because I did navy and I wouldn't do a yellow one because it doesn't tickle me right but this one I'm going to do in pink uh, but because uh, let me see um, people have asked oh, can I make it out of a fat quarter that's what people have asked well this is a fat quarter I, I did say you're going to need two right definitely but i'm not sure so while you know let's put it pretty side up so you can see it i, I wouldn't make it out of this material but it's just the right size okay so uh let's take that let's go back to our pattern all oh, right i hope you can see this can you see it Oh, let me see if I can scan you up a bit from that end to that end, yeah, and that end to that end, yeah. So, this pattern will fit on a fat quarter. So, if you've got two fat quarters that are the same, I would suggest that you move your pattern. Let me see where you are so you can see what I'm doing. I would suggest that you move your pattern right to the end of it because bring you back this way Woo! fell off see that oh hang on i got a what's it malfunction here you see this end if i take the pattern right up to the edge to cut out this end yeah you need to have a two inch cut which i'm putting a two and a half inch ruler down you will get so out of a fat quarter you will get one pattern piece and you need two so you need two fat quarters but you will also get turn it around so i can see what did I say the waistband needed to be? Oh, hang on, I've moved my computer now. The waistband needs to be 14 and 14 by 2. So that's 18. So you're going to definitely get it out of there, right? But you need two of these, so you need two fat quarters that are the same. Now, so for me i know i want to cut this out twice so i can put up and i got one of those materials it doesn't matter which way up it goes again <laughs> you know <laughs> i'm pretty good at buying those because it don't matter uh if if you but even if this was pretty side up and pretty side up that way it doesn't matter it, it it's a material it, it this is exactly the same whichever way you do it so it doesn't matter so you can put your pattern on and you can cut it however uh before we go there from this this material because you can see uh, i cut out i'll probably cut out a square for uh peter rabbit when i run out of something but um i need and i will uh don't matter to me so i will do it because i got loads of it and i will always keep i anything bigger than sort of three inches i keep for um applique work anyway so as my usual thing i need a, a two inch strip and i know that this is going to be 44 odd inches so it doesn't matter if i only get them out of one of them so I put on, well I'm going to cut off my edge, I'll put on my ruler 
give myself a clean edge as I always do get rid of that put my ruler back on for a clean edge and I will do my two inch strip off straight away right now that's going to be a lot more than 14 inches because pff, I'm doing it double width fabric but I had some missing doesn't matter if I look back on this I still got some missing up to here so when I actually cut my uh, pattern out I'm opening it up like this put my pattern back on have I no I haven't so I am still missing out on no oh, see I'm gonna have a lot left over just a minute when I get my uh, pattern weights need to move you up a bit right this is from a company called pattern weights I think I've got it on on Amazon if not eBay and unfortunately <laughs> These, I, might, I don't want to break my nails, so I just get them out, right? These are these are sort of uh, mock donuts, uh, but they oh pattern weights, yeah patternweights.co.uk. It says on the back, um, but they are mock donuts and they are really heavy bits of metal. I don't like using pins when I'm cutting because uh, they get in the way. So when I'm actually cutting a pattern, obviously I've got to take into account my uh, salvage. Uh, and then, I literally, instead of using pins, I'm holding it down. <sighs> I'm not worried about the grain of fabric. Uh, this, is, this is a utility item. And then, oh, instead of using scissors, this is what I do. Now I've moved the camera, you probably can't see what I'm doing. But I'm just... <sighs> Moving around my material. With my rotary cutter. Oh. Right. Now you'll begin to see what I'm doing. I move around. I'm pretty good at this. to get at that now if you've got a smaller one i would recommend you use it this is uh if that's 45 then this must be about 18 or 20 millimeter so you can get a more an easier cut because uh it, it's not a big as wheel as that. Right. <sighs> but on straight bits, you do want the big cut. Let's get rid of that linen fabric. Robert Kaufman. Robert, I just remember. I think it's Robert Kaufman, linen. Love. You could, you could use a ruler for this. But this is not one of those projects where you have to be that precise. I mean, you don't want to go mad, but it doesn't have to be that precise. So, having a oopity pity, got it. My pattern weights. 
that are really good enough to hold any pattern firm. When, when you, the thing is, when you hold patterns, especially thick paper patterns with pins, you're going to get bumps and lumps. So paper patterns, uh, so paper weights are the way to go. Check it out on uh, Amazon. Paperweight company, right? So now I've cut my two. Yeah? But one, two. So now I've cut my two uh, things. And I've cut my waistband. And my waistband only needs to fit like that. The skirt goes on before this goes on. But that only needs to be that width. Which is going to get caught in the seam. So I got far too much of that. But it's not a problem. Not a problem for me. Because it will go into my um, stash for bits and bobs for PR. So that's everything cut now. We've, we've, we've cut the two facings. We've cut the skirt. We've cut the main body twice. And we've cut the waistband. That's it. Now we get the soap.